Then, friends, I'm Major Garavari, and you're watching the Janaki Dialogues. It is Russia that invaded Ukraine, not the other way around. Ukraine didn't do anything. When well, Ukraine did, Ukraine did. Ukraine played right into the hands of the U.S. and NATO forces. Uh, you know, uh, Pakistan, Zindabad. Many of the people in Pakistan are saying Pakistan, Zindabad. Run away from Pakistan by you. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and press the bell icon. Something very unique has happened in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir in the last 72 hours or so. It started off, and I'll, I'll just tell you the entire sequence of events because it's very interesting. Two isolated incidents happened. One incident happened in New Delhi and the other one in Muzaffarabad, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. And that set me thinking, how do you analyze this? So let me try and analyze it for you, right? Four days back or three days back, uh, Mr. Ramit Shah, Honorable Home Minister of India says, we should have a corridor to Sharda Peet. Now Sharda Peet is a holy place. It's holy for the Kashmiri Pandits and it's holy for all Hindus actually. It's holy for all Hindus. In fact, many people say that, uh, you know, while there is no one origin of Hinduism because it's such a widespread and, uh, you know, very, very old religion. But they say that one of the earliest uh, srot or, or the source of Hinduism, one of them is also Sharda Peet, the source of knowledge actually. Not religion, but knowledge. Now what happened was that Mr. Amit Shah made a comment and he said, we will have a corridor going to Sharda Peet in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. This is what Mr. Amit Shah said. We will have we will have a corridor going to Sharda Peet so that Kashmiri Pandits and other Hindus and Indians can visit Sharda Peet. Now, I, when I heard the Honorable Home Minister statement, I thought that there would have been some deal with Pakistan, some understanding with Pakistan. And I tried to find out in the media that why don't I know about this? Because I follow this stuff on a daily basis. This is my bread and butter. Why don't I know about this? But this comment was made and that was the end of it. And I thought, all right, there is no follow up. Maybe they're going to announce something next month. Suddenly, Sheikh Rashid of Pakistan, you know, his party is also there in the POK assembly. POK has some sort of a dummy assembly there. This guy agrees to the Indian Home Minister's sentiment and his plans. A Pakistani or a POK leader agrees to what Mr. Amit Shah says and he says yes. We believe it's a wonderful idea and the POK assembly in which the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, Imran Khan's party has a majority, agrees and passes a resolution. And all this happens within three, four days. Friends, it's very surprising, at least to me. Mr. Amit Shah sitting in Delhi says something and within a few days, the entire assembly of Pakistan occupied Kashmir passes a resolution saying that, yeah, yeah, great idea, let's do it. It beats me. How does that work? And how did it even happen? But it has happened. And Abdul Basit, uh, you know, a former uh, High Commissioner to India and uh, an anti-India person, Abdul Basit, I uh, don't have much respect for him, but since he's a senior diplomat, all right. He was shocked and in his vlog, he said, these Kashmiris, you know, they call themselves Kashmiris and they don't even understand the Kashmir issue. Abdul Basit sahab, you're a Punjabi. You understand the Kashmir issue, but Kashmiris don't understand the Kashmir issue. What is the nonsense? Of course, they're Kashmiris. They understand it far, far better than you. Just because you're a diplomat and you read a few books and you passed an exam, you become an expert on Kashmir because you've been telling lies and selling these lies to the United Nations and the rest of the world. And the Kashmiris don't know anything about Kashmir. This is exactly the Pakistani Punjabi high-handedness that cost them East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh. This is exactly the Pakistani Punjabi high-handedness, which is going to cost them Balochistan and also POK. This thing that we are superior, we will tell you what to do. So anyway, uh, keep Abdul Basit aside. Now, uh, this happened. Now, what will happen, I'll tell you. And in future, I'm guessing what will happen in the future. And uh, friends, I also want to tell you, you know, where does this come from? 370 and 35A were actually, uh, you know, part of the Indian constitution before they were abrogated, right? 
So ladies and gentlemen, the special status of Kashmir was not something that the Pakistanis thought of. It was there in our constitution. But the Pakistanis saw a loophole. They saw a, you know, they said that, okay, here is something that we can take advantage of. And they started taking advantage and they use media, they use social media. And over a period of time, even from 1948 onwards, there was a narrative built up from Pakistan. And Pakistan very successfully used the media. They created the Hurriyat Conference. And the overall thing about, uh, you know, this key, we want Azadi for Kashmir or we want freedom of Kashmir was that you are different from India. Now, what Pakistan meant was you are religiously different from India, which is not true. But that is what Pakistan meant. And they kept on beating this point that you are different, you are different, you are different, you need to be treated differently. What happened was that Pakistan failed to realize that there are Kashmiris even on their side of the border. And their Kashmiris started saying that if Indian Kashmiris are different from India, we from POK must be different from Pakistan. Because after all, we are also Kashmiris and we are also different. And our culture is different from the Punjabi Pakistanis and the Sindhis. Our culture is different. So we are also different. What happened was that today, people from POK are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They don't know where to go. Yeah. These people from POK are now each and every single day, you know, they're crying about water, they're crying about electricity, food, healthcare, education, you name it, any parameter. POK has the lowest, and I'm including Gilgit Baltistan in this, it has the lowest in Pakistan. And Pakistan is already low, by the way. Yeah. Pakistan is already low. These guys have the lowest. There's nothing there, absolutely. And they see across, because you, you, you can see at various places, you can see Indian villages. And they say that, okay, even at night, there is electricity there. There are roads, there is traffic. Here, there is no electricity. There is no clean water. And they talk to their relatives across the border on WhatsApp. And their relatives keep on saying, school there was a school constructed here. There was a clinic constructed here. You know, uh, uh, people come, the local administration comes and visits. And all these things are happening in Kashmir. And there is a certain element of jealousy that happens across the border. And now people are saying that, you know, we want to come to India because there is no way you can survive. And many Pakistanis are of this view that there is no way that they can survive in Pakistan. You know, last year, 8 lakh Pakistanis left. Now, people leaving a country to seek a better future is not new. That happens in every single country. Even Americans leave America for a better future elsewhere. Indians leave India. But the reason why they left was not only for a better future. They left Pakistan. I'm talking about those 8 lakh Pakistanis who left. 800,000 Pakistanis who left last year. They left because they had no faith in Pakistan. There is a difference. You have faith in your country, but you say, okay, I'm going to make more money to the US, so let me go to US. Right? So I'm going to make more money in Singapore. I, I want to go to Singapore. And that's absolutely fine. People do that. But here Pakistanis are saying that we don't know whether Pakistan is going to last or not. We, we don't know if Pakistan is going to be there when we come back here next. Best thing is get out of here while you can. So while Pakistanis may say, the leaders may say, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan Zindabad, many of the people in Pakistan are saying, Pakistan Zindabad, run away from Pakistan while you're still alive. You don't know what may happen in that place next. In more news, uh, Russia assumes UN Security Council presidency despite Ukrainian anger. Oh my God, Ukrainian anger, is it? Russia has taken presidency of the UN Security Council despite Ukrainian urging members to block the move. Each of the council's 15 members take up the presidency for a month on a rotating pattern. The last time Russia had presidency, February 22, it launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. It means the Security Council is being led by a country whose president is subject to an international arrest warrant for alleged war crimes. You know, uh, Ukrainian foreign minister, etc., etc. are... See, it does not matter what Ukraine says. Okay. Now, Ukraine is being used. I said this in yesterday's video also. Ukraine is being used by, by uh, you know, the Western world. They're being used by the United States of America. It was wrong for Russia to invade Ukraine. But Ukraine is being used. And the West does not want this war to stop. And I don't think Zelensky wants this war to stop. Because Zelensky has delusions of being Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great or something like that. Okay, he's done a fine job as president. Uh, let's not deny him that. But the fact of the matter is, Zelensky feels that, you know, uh, he's at the cusp of something phenomenal and centuries 
will remember him as the president who led Ukraine to victory over Russia. That is not going to happen. Russia has thousands upon thousands of nuclear weapons. And today Russia is again the president of the United Nations Security Council. It happens in rotation. But the thing is that Ukraine objected. And in spite of most of the countries, at least, uh, uh, you see, the United States is against Russia. The permanent members, of course. Uh, it was uh, US is against, France is against, right? England is against, all right? And China, let us say, it is pro and India is neutral. But in spite of, you know, uh, three members of the United Nations Security Council, permanent members, they could not stop Russia. Ukraine tried its best. You will not be able to stop Russia. The only way to stop this war, the only way to stop this war is to get Russia and Ukraine on the table. You will find it odd because, you know, the normal reaction is, hey, it is Russia that invaded Ukraine. Yeah? Not the other way around. Ukraine didn't do anything. Well, Ukraine did. Ukraine did. Ukraine played right into the hands of the US and NATO forces. I'm not justifying Russia's aggression. All I'm saying is that there were smarter ways to do this. This is diplomacy. This is not 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. If Russia sees problems in his backyard, Russia will attack. Any country will attack. Friends and news from the United States of America, Georgia, the state of Georgia has passed a resolution condemning Hindophobia and becomes the first US state to do so. So what this news item says essentially is that in a historic move, and this is Coalition of Hindus of North America, they've tweeted, and this is their tweet, in a historic move, Georgia legislature passes the first ever country County resolution condemning Hindu phobia and anti-Hindu bigotry. The resolution recognized the contribution of Indian Americans and Hindu Americans in Georgia. So, what is Hindu phobia? The hatred of Hindus, the hatred of Hinduism, which is prevalent all over the world, right? And mostly it is instigated, mostly by Pakistanis and Khalistanis. I'm, I'm not saying that it is limited to that, because it's not. It's not limited to that. There are so many people that I've, I've seen videos in which uh, uh, there was one woman saying that, why are you Indians here? You're, you're everywhere. And she was screaming at this, this other lady was screaming at a bunch of Indian women there. And uh, you see, uh, it's not just the Pakistanis and the Khalistanis, though they're the worst of the lot, but, uh, but uh, you know, other people also. And where does this come from? Actually, I'll tell you. Hindus are phenomenally successful. And going beyond Hindus, Indians are phenomenally successful. Now, most of the Indians happen to be Hindu because they are like 85-86% even in India, right? So abroad, let's say 85-86% are Hindus. So maximum or a majority of the people outside will be Hindus. Just speaking as, as you know, percentage terms. So they are very successful and this leads to a lot of jealousy. A lot of this, a lot of this has to do with jealousy. Why are they so successful? You know, top doctors, top scientists top techies. Today, you have, uh, you have uh, two people of Indian origin who are going to fight the next US elections. Indians are everywhere and Indians are the most successful community in India. The most successful community and in many places. I don't have the data with me, but in many places, they're making more money than the majority white population in many places in the US. I don't have the states with me. I don't have the data. But uh, so this obviously leads to a lot of jealousy among a lot of people. Who are these people? Oh, they've come here, they've grabbed. Indians are the new Jews. Hindus are the new Jews. This was exactly what people said about Jews also, that they've grabbed everything and they're manipulating stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, the Jews run the economy, etc., etc., etc. And what is wrong with if, if somebody runs the economy? If you're good enough, you run the economy. Somebody has to run the economy. If you're good enough, you will run the economy. But you're not good enough. And then you want to point fingers at somebody who is good enough. Sure, if people say that Indians run Silicon Valley. We, we deserve it. We've studied hard. We, we've sort of uh, uh, climbed the ladder. And we are where we are because, because of our values, because of our culture, because of our ethos, our hard work our intelligence. Why would people grudge us that? I mean, we have earned it. It's not been given down from generation to generation. We have earned it. This is something that we have earned by the sweat of our brow, as they say.
why should people but hindu phobia is real and hindu phobia happens in the state of georgia i would like to thank everybody you know and all the all the citizens also in the state of georgia for supporting this this very unique cause and everybody needs to be treated equally everybody needs to be treated equally this is something that we have to understand in america america says uh, what are the the home of the brave the land of the free yeah so you must live up to that phrase or that saying home of the brave land of the free it's not home of the brave if you pick upon innocent people and it's not land of the free if those innocent people are scared of their lives and scared that they'll be discriminated against and for what crime for being more successful than you that is the crime of hindus and of indians in the united states of america so thank you georgia in iran what's happening in iran they've made it plain the head of state had made it plain that hijab is non negotiable all the women will wear hijab we want everybody in iran to wear hijab yaar everybody they should wear women will wear hijab though in some places in the cities you know women don't wear hijab so there was a case where a woman was in a shop she was not wearing hijab this guy takes you know a, a bunch of uh, this thing or he takes a box of yogurt and he throws the yogurt on her and he continues to do that you know this is the famous yogurt attack in iran which is being called the yogurt attack so you can look it up on youtube and on google uh, yogurt attack in iran so this is how men in iran are treating at least some men are treating women in iran if you don't wear the hijab see this leads to the downfall of nations so this is what is happening in iran actually so friends in iran what they are saying is that women will wear hijab otherwise we'll put them in jail they've been putting women in jail for the crime of not wearing hijab so now since the women started protect, uh, protesting and it's been over a year since the protest happened they killed one woman you know last year they killed her because she was not wearing a hijab so now women are protesting now the men are hitting back conservative men are hitting back and hitting back in such a manner that the message is loud and clear so somebody might push a woman or somebody might throw something at her just to tell her that you are a target next time you move out of your house without a hijab you will be a target so ladies and gentlemen that's all for our second episode of the chanakya dialogues english i hope you like this episode if you have any feedback for us let us know and we'll be happy to course correct please like this video subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai